What's up guys, this is John from the Reaper blog. In this video, we're looking at new features in Reaper 5.40, but first we need to catch up on a couple things that I didn't show in previous videos. In Reaper 5.33, there is recording during audio pre-roll, which means that if we set up our pre-roll in our metronome settings, go down to the bottom here and we check this box, pre-roll before recording, and we set our pre-roll measure to one or two, whatever you need, it's going to record before it starts. It's going to give us a one bar count in. It's going to actually play the track from here, even though I'm starting recording here. And then when we stop, we can actually pull back the recorded file and everything that was happening during the pre-roll was kept. So that could be like a slide up on a guitar. It could be like a couple milliseconds of the guitar that was just a little behind ahead of the beat, uh, but you keep that. So let's just do a really quick, stupid test with my voice. This is pre-roll, and now it's recording over the beat. And when we stop, we can pull it back, and we can hear. This is pre-roll, and there we go. So that's actually a pretty big change, because up until 5.33, the actual recording would be cut right here, and you would miss all of this. You know, let's say this is your vocal, and it starts just a little ahead of the beat, this word would be cut off like that. You would have nothing to pull it back. Uh, so you'd have a little click there and you'd miss half the word. Uh, and that's a pretty common thing to want to jump in at a very specific part and keep going rather than going into a time selection based recording mode. So the other option would be to like make a time selection set your recording mode to time selection auto punch and then you move your cursor back and then hit record it's going to record in the background go into monitoring and record through this section and then come out after that that record mode is not always ideal if you just want to replace what's there and keep going then the pre-roll option is great so that's one of the new things in reaper 5.33 the other thing is with Rex files. So here I have two Rex files. It's actually the same one and I've imported them in different ways. So let's go into the Media Explorer and I have this file here. And Temple matches on just to bring it in. If I drag this in here, it gives me this option, beat slices that dynamically adjust to tempo changes, which is what we're looking at here, this chopped up file. This other option, single loopable media item, just looks like a regular WAV file recording, but Rex files now do something that's really interesting uh, and special. Two files that are exactly the same, but the very important thing that is changed with Rex files is that it is moving the timing of the slices inside the file rather than applying resampling or stretching whenever you're changing the tempo. So here we go at 90 beats per minute. This is their original recorded tempo. So it sounds the same, but let's change the tempo. Let's make this a little bit faster. Change this up to 100 beats per minute. So it sounds the same. It's not resampling, it's not stretching or shrinking these items, it's just um, changing the, the timing between the notes. And we can make this go more extreme, so let's set this to 60. Right, it doesn't sound right, but it doesn't sound wrong in the sense that the items are stretched. So the alternative to that, what used to happen is basically we would import a Rex file like this. And unless you went into uh, source properties on the item and changed the tempo here, you would lose some sound quality. Okay, we're back to the original tempo. I'm going to glue this item so to make it a WAV file, right? And now if I apply the time stretching, by changing the project tempo. Let's set this to 60 again. It's gonna sound really stretched. And it's gonna roll into the original one with uh, no stretching.
You can go even further, set to 45 beats per minute. So it's using that stretching algorithm uh, that can make things sound wrong. Uh, actually, the intro of my videos is a couple of Rex loops, and I found that the old way, the stretched way, uh, the resampling way, actually sounds better on that intro. So, you know, this, this new way works well, but sometimes you want that glitchy sort of sound, because if you're stretching it out really far and you're using the gaps, it, sounds, it can sound like this. And that's not very cohesive either. So that's what's new with uh, 5.33. Let's move on to Reaper 5.34. There was the option to use the sample rate wildcard in your rendering. So very simply, file, render, and in this window, we go to wildcards, and in here we have sample rate. And that's just going to input the sample rate of the project into the file name that you're exporting. A new function in Reaper 5.40 is for peaks. We now have a spectrogram view for items. So let's go into the view menu, go to peaks display settings, We're going to change this from peaks to spectrogram. So there we go. And we can change the colors here. We can change the gain. Uh, you can see that these ones here, I need to rebuild my peaks before I would actually see them. But this is a newly recorded WAV file, so Reaper already built the peaks for that. What we're seeing here is the spectrum of sound. So this is like a really bassy stuff. So most of the sound is centered around the bottom part of this. We can change the, the curve, so we're getting a little more detail on the bottom end. There's a couple settings. If we right click in here, we can load presets. There's a couple presets that come with it. Reset the default. We can reverse the spectrum. Louder sounds have a cooler color. If we make this quite big, we can actually see some good detail here. We also have this option of showing spectrogram and peaks at the same time. And it splits it up like this on a stereo file on a mono item. It would look like this. We're seeing these low frequencies. We actually see that in the waveform, that it's a very low frequency. And we can see the cycles here. Let's boost that up. And you can see the same sort of repetitive waveform. You can see the individual cycles of that waveform there. Move grid appearance options from grid slash snap window to preferences slash appearance. So that's the top of this window. Used to have options for your grid lines and your marker lines would uh, their their depth in the arrange view on top of items, through the items, underneath the items. And now that's in preferences and appearance. So we're going to open up preferences, go to appearance, and here's the option: grid line Z order through items, over items, under items. Uh, show data grid lines. All of this stuff used to be in that grid window. Now it's there. So now you know. There's another thing in preferences. There's the option to keep the grid window floating after you've made your changes. So that's in general and advanced. Allow track envelope routing windows to stay open. That also includes the grid window. So we're going to turn that on. Click OK. And now we open this window. We click away it's going to stay active, which is helpful because what I'm going to show you next is a range view swing grid. So I have a couple items here. It's the same sample. I've got it on quarter notes, and then I have it on kind of a, a 16th note pattern here. Right, so it's this part here that we're most concerned about. Let's apply some swing to that. So right now, it's on the 16th note grid. Right. What's new here is this swing grid option. I'm going to change the theme just so we can see those grid lines a little bit better. These grid lines now move. If we're on 16th notes, it's going to move the, um, the second 16th note. It's going to ignore the quarter notes. 
and the eighth notes and just move the 16th. If we have it on eighth notes and we move it, then it's going to move that middle line between the quarter notes. So let's set this to 16th. I'm going to select these items here. I'm going to activate this option, adjust selected items when swing, changing swing. So when I apply this swing by bringing this up, you can see that a couple of those items are actually moving. All right, so let's go to about 60% swing. All right, and if I put it back to zero, here's what we had before. Bring it up. You can also bring it down a little bit. So there's minus 36%. So that's a totally new thing in Reaper, a range view swing grid. Pretty cool. When we're starting Reaper, we have this option of what to do. I have it set to new project, but a lot of people like to use this prompt option. Within this list, it's going to give you some options like your recent projects and your templates, but it also gives you the new option to open the project in recovery mode, which means that all your plugins will be offline. It's a good way of troubleshooting things. They've recently unlocked a few things for the Resample-Matic 5000 plugin for scripters. So basically, the functions that are listed here in the change log don't make any sense unless you use scripts. Scripts can access functions of the plugin, and it makes it easier for us all to use. To demonstrate this or why it's important, I'm just going to grab a couple drum samples from the Korg mini pops. So I got a kick. I've got a snare, bring that in. I've got cymbals, hi-hat, bring that in. That's all I need for now, just for this quick demo. Make this track a little bit bigger, close the Media Explorer, open up the action list, and we're looking for uh, some new functions in Repack, search for RS5K. The actions we want here are export selected items to RS5K instance on same track as chromatic source export selected items to RS5K instances on selected track drum mode, or export selected items to RS5K instances on selected track. These are drum samples, so I'm going to use the drum mode one, uh, which is going to take each of these, put them into a different instance of Resample-Matic, and uh, assign them to different keys. And this drum mode was something that I just suggested to MPL yesterday based on what I had discovered from using the other mode. And it's fantastic. It saves so much time. So basically drum mode sets it up so that, um, so that your keys are ready to play. It makes this little loop so we can hear our samples, right? But if we go into this bass drum, the snare drum and the hi-hat, They've set the max voices to one. Obey note offs is turned off, so I can just play on my keyboard right away. If you're used to working with Resample-Matic 5000, you know that it can be a pain to get stuff set up. So when the Reaper developers unlock things and, and give scripters access to things like this, it just makes a huge difference. So that was one of the things. I can take this file here and use this other action for the chromatic source. And now I'm on this track and I press key. So it's playing that loop. It's loaded that in here. And I'm just playing it across the keyboard. So that uses different settings from the drum mode where this has four voices, it's going to obey note offs, things like that. There's also some other scripts that we can use with this if we search for Resample-Matic. From Lacassena, we've got pitch changes. So the selected instance of Resample-Matic, go up one semitone, that's this pitch offset function here. So I'll just run that a couple times and it's pitched offset. It's changed and we can reset it here and it's reset to zero again. So this is only a couple days 
into uh, Reaper 5.40 being released. These scripts are already available in Repack. There are all of these scripts available, things that improve your life with using Reaper. So definitely check that out. I have a couple videos on using Repack and some of the cool things that are in there, uh, but it's updated basically daily. These guys making scripts are the best. One more thing to talk about is the high DPI support. Um, they've been tweaking this for the last couple months. There's a beta high DPI and retina theme. So if you're using Reaper and you have a high DPI screen, which I do not, there's this high DPI theme that you can try out. It's, it's still work in progress, but if you have a high DPI screen, which means, let's say you have like a 22 inch 4K monitor, that's going to be a high DPI monitor. If you have a 56 inch 4K monitor, that's probably not going to be a high DPI monitor. That's basically for 1080p normal screens uh, spread out. A high DPI monitor is something that has a high pixel density, a lot of pixels per inch. So the MacBook 15 inch Retina is a high DPI screen. Reaper by itself doesn't look good on those types of screens because it's not optimized for it. They're working on it. They've made it quite a few changes in this particular update. So if you have a high DPI screen or a retina screen for your Mac, head over to the forum, grab that high DPI theme and check it out, give your feedback and uh, let's get this working for everyone. If you're a theme maker, you can start now on making your theme high DPI compatible. You can override the global UI scaling and you can also create high DPI images for your theme. So that's it for what's new in Reaper 5.33 up to 5.40. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support on Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.